Hi and welcome to another episode of the 361, a recovery program for women following loss. And today it's all about silence. So the question is silence, to fill or not to fill? That is the question. What is it about silence? One, the two sides of silence. Let's face it, silence can be really comforting, it can be really peaceful and it can be fantastic, but as a survivor of PTSD, I know that silence can also feel really uncomfortable. It's kind of like what's in the silence and one of my things that I wrote recently and it just, as I wrote it, I just thought, wow, was the silence, the shame is in the silence. I'm not quite sure what it really means, but it sort of spoke to me that in a lot of silent treatments that we receive from people, there's a kind of shame in there. And the trick is not to hold that shame or accept that shame. Um, and there's other kinds of being uncomfortable in silence for people who just won't shut up and they talk constantly, don't they annoy you? I've just been in a library where someone wouldn't shut up. And it's almost like they're scared of silence. So in marriage number one, I was married to somebody who was scared of silence and would use anything to cover it up, talking, TV, music. And so we were never silent. And I realise now that was a bit of fear. And in marriage number two, silence was used as a control mechanism. I wonder if anyone else has experienced this. So there was a horrible silences um, that were kind of scary. And it was used as some form of coercive control along with eyeballing. Hmm. So the two sides. Two, the sound of silence. To be honest, there really isn't a silence. You're going to say, oh, yeah, it's really silent. I go and sit in nature, Alice. But actually, when you sit in nature, it's quite noisy. There's all sorts of things going on. So the trick is to realise there is no totally silent place for most of us every day. I mean, even the beach is really noisy and the forests are noisy with animals. But the trick is to actually be able to just sit there and anchor ourselves I suppose in a way because it can be very healing one of the things I like to do when I'm sitting in silent nature is just to close my eyes it's called the anchor and to listen for five things you could try this so you listen for five things and then you try and see what's the furthest thing you can hear and it's only quick and you're probably saying oh that doesn't work but it actually stops you worrying about whatever you're worrying at that moment and gives you a bit of perspective and I find nature just gives me a lot of perspective I used to live on the beach miles of perspective but even now walking in a park gives me perspective try that little anchoring thing the five things okay three the pause I really really wish that I'd been able to pause my life after major traumas and major losses and not race on as I've always done and make huge mistakes. The 361 Recovery Programme is a chance to pause and a chance to actually not make those mistakes. So pausing, wouldn't it be great if we could press pause but what I'd like to add is and do it differently next time. There you are, I paused just for a little bit. And it's, wasn't it great? Um, so that pause is actually to stop us making serious mistakes after loss, two years minimum, before we make any major mistake, major, sorry, that was a Freudian slip, before we make any major changes and decisions in our life. And ladies, that includes serious dating. So major decisions about life partners for two years after a huge significant loss like a divorce or a boyfriend, girlfriend. Sorry to tell you, it's really difficult to make that work because it's better to pause. Why is it better? It's more healthy, gives us time to think. And within that, the 361 Recovery Programme gives us that pause, gives us that time to think before we try and add other people back in. Four, the power of silence. Well, silence is really powerful. Um, it can be used, as I say, triggering for coercive control, but it can also actually be, you know, triggering in that way. But what about the silence of friends? If we've been bereaved, the friends who don't say anything, is it really true that they don't know what to say? Or is it that they're avoiding us and they don't really want to reach out to us and, you know, for us to cry and be all snotty? 
is that silence saying more about them than it is about us? I think so. So there's that silence. In that silence, don't take on judgment. Don't take on shame. Well, I'm talking to myself here because I do this a lot as a survivor. I'll introduce myself as a survivor and this is horrible pause silence. And within that, it's a bit of shaming, a bit of judgment. And if, it, if even if there isn't, I feel it. And the trick for me is to try not to accept. Just let that silence ride because I am who I am, as that singer said. And five, touch talks. Have you ever been around the bedside of somebody who's dying? Just shut up. Just be quiet. The silence talks. Hold someone's hand. Don't say anything. Get used to this. Get used to try not saying anything when someone's really upset. See how powerful that silence is. It really is. Hope this helped. Think a lot about silence, really. As I say, because of the two sides, the coercive control, and now I'm in the powerful healing silence. The 361 Recovery Programme is coming out to you. It's for women. It's coming out twice a week on YouTube, Monday and Wednesday at 7, and a blog following. So tomorrow there'll be a blog on silence. Um, it's also available online, and there's a chance to do one-to-one -one coaching with myself. There's a book coming out and lots of other things to help you recover from loss um so keep watching and